Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're talking about Pulsemon again. Now, Pulsemon's weird. We've only actually ever had one Pulsemon card, but because it was released as two different promos over in Japan, and it is going to be a pre-release promo over here, and we've had a set of sleeves as well, we've actually ended up talking about Pulsemon a lot, even though we've only ever actually had one card. Well, it turns out that is all about to change, ladies and gentlemen, because you see Pulsemon is about to get another card, and oh, I like this one just as... Wow. I like the first one. I like this one too. Translations here either from the lovely Jason Snowjacks or the lovely folks over at Enzan Gaming, whichever you prefer to use, quite frankly. Now, what we've got here is, in terms of stats, the same as the other Pulsemon. Three cost to play normally, zero cost to digivolve, 2,000 power. It is very much exactly what we would generally expect from a level 3 with a skill. And this is one of those Digimon that has both an inheritable and a non-inheritable skill. Was actually shown off along with Agamon and Gabimon, who of course are also from this upcoming set, and also have both an inheritable and a non-inheritable skill. So what do we have? Well, the first skill is hyper risky, and I kind of love it. When you play it, you may discard your security until there are three left and gain one memory for each security you have discarded. Yes. Now, look, don't get me wrong. Straight off the face of it, you've got to look at this and go, well, hang on a second. We're, we're discarding security. D do we want to discard security? I mean, it really depends how you look at it. In a non-yellow deck, there is a pretty strong argument that you, in fact, do not want to be discarding security. Because yellow's got all the recovery. Obviously, we're going to talk about that as we go through here. But essentially, the question isn't, do you want to give up security? Obviously, as a blanket question, the answer is no. But really, the more important question we're asking with Pulsemon here is, is it worth it? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very different question indeed. Because it's not about the fact that you're giving up the security, it is about what you get for giving it up. Now, if we look at it again, if we just look at this card, we essentially gain two memory. We're assuming you haven't given up any security to your opponent at this stage. We're assuming that you haven't used any recovery. Because remember, Yellow's actually got the kind of recovery which can just keep going higher. You know, back in Booster 1.0 for us, we had that Seraphimon, which did come out in BT1. And that has got a blanket skill. When you did evolve, you recover one. So even if you haven't given away any security, even if your opponent hasn't taken any, you will still get to recover when you play Seraphimon. So you could get above five here and be gaining more memory. But for the purposes of this discussion, let's assume we're not going any higher than five. You're essentially gaining two memory, and you are giving your opponent two security. And it is discarding, I should say. So any tamers discarded will not get played, because you are discarding. Any security Digimon will not be played. Any option cards will not give you any security skills. You only get to just discard them. You don't get any bonuses for having discarded them, which obviously is another thing which is not entirely ideal, I, I think would be a polite way to put it. But I don't think it really matters here. Because essentially, what you're actually doing here is gaining a bit of memory, and you are manipulating your security here to activate other effects. And a great example of this can be seen when we go and look at the other one. As in the other Pulsemon. Because the other Pulsemon reads, when you play it, if you have three or more security cards, draw one. If you have two or fewer security, gain a memory. Okay. So, if you play this new Pulsemon, you trash two security cards. 
You go down to free security. You then play this Pulsemon. You draw a card. You gain a memory. So essentially, the first Pulsemon, you play it. It costs three, but you gain two back. You've essentially paid one. And this second Pulsemon, you play it, but because you've got free security remaining, it's only really a two cost. So you've played two Pulsemon, and you've only actually paid free memory, and you've drawn a card. So essentially what you've got here is two Digimon played for free memory, and you draw a card at the same time. That is pretty gosh darn awesome. And then, of course, we can start building it back up again. I've told you that yellow have recovery. So take the Salomon from BT2. When it is deleted, if your security is free or less, you recover one. So if you've got a Salomon in play that you can throw against your opponent's security, or you've got some other way of deleting it, then actually you don't go down to free security. You go down to free, take advantage of it with Pulsemon, and then you go straight back up again with Salomon. When you play Magnadramon, if you've got three or fewer security, then you recover two when you play it. And Magnadramon is generally a level six that you do play, with the assumption you're probably going to end up hard casting it because it's got a really good play skill. So what you can essentially do here is get your level threes and play really cheaply, draw a card, and then you play Magnadramon to get those two security back. And okay, fine, Magnadramon is actually quite expensive, so you're probably giving your opponent the turn with a bunch of memory, but you'll have your two Pulsemon out, you'll have your Magnadramon out, you'll have drawn yourself an extra card, and you'll actually still be at five security. And that's kind of my point here. If this was in another color, it might not work. But now it kind of does. Want another example? How about the Cherubimon or Cherubimon or however it's pronounced from BT3? When you attack, if you have three or fewer security cards, you place one yellow Digimon from your trash on top of your security face down. So here, not only are you recovering, but you are recovering a particular Digimon. And it's worth pointing out at this stage, I mentioned Anklemon earlier as a security Digimon, or I didn't name it, but I put it up on the screen. So what you essentially do is you go down to free security using Pulsemon, then you immediately attack with Cherubimon, you put an Anklemon from your trash at the top of your security, and you know that the next time your opponent attacks, it is going to be an Anklemon that you play for free. Or you put a big powerful level 6 there. So your opponent basically knows they either can't attack the security, or they can attack the security, but they are going to be losing their Digimon if they do so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I love Pulsemon so much. We can look at this straight off the bat and go, well, it's quite nice in the early game to gain a little bit of extra memory, and that's quite lovely. But when you start building in other skills that you activate, and then you start building in the other recovery that you've got, it really starts turning into a rather ridiculous card. It's one you've got to be really careful when you play. You cannot just go nuts and be throwing it down willy-nilly, but as long as you do... I think you will be absolutely fine. Now, we do have an Inheritable skill here as well. I don't think it's the reason to play Pulsemon, but I do think it's actually really good. The Inheritable skill basically says, on your turn, while you have free security, this Digimon gains jamming. Now, I must say, and it's super, super, super important... This is only when you've got exactly free security. As soon as you go away from free security, you lose it. That's a bit sad. But again, I've just given you a bunch of examples of yellow that will recover. So I think we'll be all right in that regard. But jamming's awesome. Jamming means that when you attack the security, you are guaranteed to survive. That's a good thing. It means you can go taking out some of your opponent's security cards and you know that you are absolutely going to be okay at the end of it. This is a very good thing. And if we look at yellow cards and jamming, yellow is anemic when it comes to jamming. The only yellow card we've seen with jamming, and I'm searching over at digimoncard.dev. Stop me if you think I've missed something, but digimoncard.dev is a good place to go and look. See someone from BT1. 
That has jamming. Not as an inheritable skill, as just a static skill, but it, it has it. And that is it. That is the sum total of all the yellow Digimon that have jamming. So now we're bringing in another way to do it. Honestly, I think the reason to play Pulsemon is all of those cards that activate that skill when you go down to free memory. And I have mentioned a bunch of those. I'm sure there are more I haven't mentioned. If there are, pop them down in the comment section. Tell me your favorite combos. I'd love to hear them. And there are going to be more in the future, incidentally, if there are this many yellow cards that are, when you've got free security already, you know that there are going to be more in the future, and that's kind of my point here. This gets very silly very quickly, and I absolutely love it. I think this is a 5 Wassy card. Yes, I know there is a potential for you to give away a couple of security and then your opponent has a nuts turn and then you lose. But honestly, if that is happening, you've probably played wrong. You've probably played the game poorly. Because you should not be using this Pulsemon unless it is going to start activating silly combos for you. You should not be using this Pulsemon in a situation where your opponent can take advantage of it and win the following turn. That would be extremely silly. I like this, ladies and gentlemen. I like it a lot. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wasi Plays.